Before I get into today's video, remember to follow me on Twitter. So my Twitter, the link is in the description below. You can also find me. My handle is at Jackson Kruger. Come over, say hi. And anyways, back to your regularly scheduled video. All right, let's talk about the Miami Dolphins and what do they do from here? Because, you know, they're a team that I think is getting a lot of criticism now for the whole Brian Flores situation. But I actually think that, again, let's just talk football here. Uh, from the football side of things, I think that they might actually be in a pretty good spot. I think that Tua showed some flashes this year. Like, I think that Tua, he's, okay, listen, is it a little bit annoying when anytime I criticize Tua, every single Miami Dolphins fan gets mad at me? Yeah, a little bit. But at the same time, like, I was, as a whole, pretty impressed with what I saw, the growth I saw from Tua from year one to year two, and you can hope that that continues, and I think that there's reason for optimism there. I also think that they have a ton of cap space, and they got a couple free agents they have to sign, but nothing too bad. In fact, let's just start there. So they have $64 million currently in cap space. Now, they do have some guys they have to sign, and some important guys they have to sign. Uh, Will Fuller is interesting. Like, I kind of forgot that Will Fuller was on the Dolphins this year, but, you know, part of the Will Fuller thing is you don't know how much he's going to play. So that's always a question with him. And, uh, you know, maybe you try to bring him back on a similar flyer, take a chance. Maybe you just go for a different free agent wide receiver who could add more value. Some, you know, and you, you feel like it's more consistently on the field. That could make sense. Uh, but the, I think the two key, more key ones, Emmanuel Ogba and Mike Gusecki, uh, really Mike Gusecki is probably the key one. Uh, also should mention the numbers you see next to these guys. These are how many, uh, you know, how many millions of dollars I'm either sports track guesses that they will get or my own guess if sports track didn't have it there. The bottom section, I kind of just put two for everyone because uh, that's, you know, it'll be around there. And if you don't re-sign those guys, you'll have to at least get a replacement for those guys. These also aren't all all of their free agents, but they're, you know, a decent chunk of their free agents. So like, you know, they'll have to get a backup quarterback. Uh, Philip Lindsay and Malcolm Brown, uh, I think they'll probably be fine. It is, you know, continue to nickel and dime halfbacks. That is kind of the, 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 the Shanahan way with now, you know, your new head coach from the Shanahan tree. He'll probably do something similar. Uh, and, you know, like, like Jason McCourtney and John Jenkins. Okay, you're fine with letting them walk if you want to, but you have to replace them with somebody. So they would need $40 million to sign everybody, which still means they would have $24 million left over. And again, keep in mind, most teams spend over the cap in terms of actual money, so they should be okay here. Also, these are the, the players that they could cut. And you see that, I mean, there's a lot of guys on this list. Now, again, I'm not saying they should cut all of these guys. I don't think there's some guys that I definitely think that they should not cut. But these are what you could cut if you chose to. And if you did, if you cut all these guys, you would save a total of $31 million. Again, not saying that they should do that. There's some guys I definitely think that they shouldn't. But these are the people who I felt like I could somehow conceive of a world where you would cut. Like Eric Rowe, uh, I don't think he's going anywhere. You'd save five, five million, maybe if you don't value safeties, you'd get rid of him. But I think that you you keep him and Javon Holland and go with that. But like you know, uh, a Jesse Davis, I could see like he was a tackle, a starting tackle for them, who was not good. So maybe you just get rid of him and move off him and save the four million and try to replace him. I could see something like that happening. So uh, you got a lot of guys like that who it's like okay, you know. They're, they have a role, but you could potentially move off of them if you wanted to, or you can move off of a few of these guys to build up some more money to potentially really go after some guys in free agency. If you look at this chart now, this is where they ranked in each PFF grade in each positional category. So the passing game was 16th best, which I think is fair. I think that Tua showed that like, okay, he can at least be like that, you know, average like mid-tier quarterback at this point and there's still potential he's still only played two years you can hope that he can continue to grow and I keep saying I want to see Tua with an actual offensive line because you see that O-line 32nd in football that's where you have to improve and if you can improve that maybe you'll see more improvements from Tua maybe you'll see him be able to uh you know do better stuff the receiving game wasn't spectacular either Jalen Waddle was awesome so you got to you know, you got a piece there, but maybe there's there's still some room I think that you can uh, try to improve upon. Maybe it's just a healthy thing because like Devontae Parker's certainly very good as well. You have Mike Gusecki who counts there, so who I'm assuming they're going to keep. I think it'd be silly to get rid of. So uh, you can maybe use another guy if you want to. Uh, 
I, I think that that would make sense. And maybe Will Fuller is that guy. I don't know. But also the running game, not great. But again, you can live with that. That's not a big deal as long as you can block well, which they can't. Uh, so that's kind of the issue. Defense was very good. Good run defense, good pass rush, or at least above average pass rush in solid coverage. The coverage maybe not as good as it was last year, according to them. But, uh, you know, uh, it's still not not a bad scenario on defense. I think the, the clear area they need improvement on is going to be the offensive line. I made this chart right here. This is kind of where I have as these are kind of the the key free agents they could potentially go after. So these are, you know, some centers, some guard or a center, some guards and some tackles right here. Really the only guy who I think that they like could feel comfortable on their offensive line of keeping really I'd say like Robert Hunt. Okay, he can stay. That's fine. I, I don't think he's a star, but like I wouldn't feel bad about that. Basically, I would I would actually really like the Dolphins if they just like said, you know what, we're going to sign four of these guys. Like if they just said, you know, what, we're signing Ryan Jensen, Connor Williams, Dwayne Brown, and Morgan Moses and calling it a day, like I would immediately be like, okay, this is, might be a playoff team. Like that's how big of a signing that would be. They might have to work around the cap a little bit, but not that much. Like you could totally make that work. There are also some stars on this list, like a Brandon Sheriff uh, getting 17 or projected to get 17 million. Uh, you have uh, uh, Teron Armstead and Orlando Brown Jr. I think Orlando Brown Jr. the Chiefs keep. I don't think you give up a first rounder just to get rid of him. I think they, they keep him. But, you know, there's potential there because, again, you can always franchise tag these guys as well. But if one of those hits the open market, I don't know if I would love that move from the Dolphins. I mean, you do need to improve your line, but I've always kind of been a believer in just get like five guys who can play as opposed to getting like the star players. I think that what they need more, just, just guys who can play. So yeah, I mean, I like what I've seen from the Dolphins. And I think I like the position the Dolphins are in. Like I kind of got branded, I feel like a little bit as a Dolphins hater last year because, uh, you know, uh, I was maybe lower on Tua than I am now. And also, I mean, I didn't think they would make, a make the playoffs last year. I was correct about that. Uh, although I had them winning uh, six games and they won nine. So I, they still did over. Uh, they, they met my you know, expectations and then some. But still, uh, part of it is I felt like the Dolphins were just kind of a, a year away a little bit. And I don't love every move they made. But the nice thing is, well, you can get, get opportunities to make more. And they're still in a pretty decent situation right now. I think Mike McDaniel is a, a good head coach. I think he will be. I think he's... You know, I feel as good about Mike McDaniel as I do about basically anyone else I could feel about in this spot. When we did our Kyle and I on the podcast, did our uh, you know our, our draft of drafting our favorite new head coaches, I put him at number one. I, I like what I've seen from him. I like what I've heard from him, and I think that especially it should fit with a Tua scheme really nicely. I mean, you know, he's worked with Jimmy Garoppolo and had success. I think he can work with Tua and have some success, and I think it could be a great thing for Tua. And I do think that, you know, you get a better offensive line. I think really good stuff could happen with this Dolphins team. I think that it, there's reason for optimism with the Dolphins. Again, we'll see how well they, they handle this because I felt like they were in good situations in the past and maybe didn't completely nail it the way they should have. But, uh, you know, we'll continue to see what they can do. Uh, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on this, all this interesting stuff with the Dolphins? Uh, always love hearing from you. And, of course, as always... Thanks for watching.